This Coast and Ears model shows how eroded cliff material is moved along the coast in a process known as longshore drift. The model is a plastic box with a sloping beach and cliff, as well as these wave paddles. We can use these to set up a wave pattern with prevailing currents from one direction, as well as storms from other directions. We can use this model to show how sediments are moved up and down the beach by these waves in a process known as longshore drift. So, what happens when eroded cliff material falls onto the beach? We can show this in our model. Simply pour sand of different grains at the top of your beach in one corner. You can then set up currents and waves from the prevailing direction using the wave paddle. You can see these waves wash up the shore full of energy. That's known as swash. They wash onto the shore at an angle, pushing the eroded sediment along the beach. And then these same waves fall back under gravity perpendicular to the shore in a straight line. This is known as backwash. This action moves the sediment along the coast. Larger particles are moved by traction, where they are rolled along the beach surface. Medium-sized particles are bounced along in the wave energy in a process known as saltation. And smaller, finer material may be held in solution, moved in the water column. Look at these red arrows. The material is moved up the beach, usually at an angle, and then falls straight down in a zigzag pattern. And you can see in our model that the larger material starts to fall out as the waves lose energy higher up the beach, and the finer material is deposited further around the coast, building up beach levels. This happens in the natural environment on our dynamic coast, and is why features like nesses and spits form around our coast. As we continue, we can see more of this material is being transported by longshore drift along the coast. As the waves lose energy, they fall back down the beach, and you can see the heavier material being deposited and finer material being carried further along the beach and being deposited in lower energy areas. Some of this material is taken out to sea, as you can see in the water on our model. This is a perfectly natural process on our dynamic coastline and is why beach levels change over time during the year. So what happens when we place hard, engineered structures like a groin on the beach? We can simulate this in our model by placing a groin on the beach and continuing the wave pattern from the prevailing direction. We can show how sediment transport process is interrupted along our coast. You can see in the model the sediment can no longer move past the structure, as it would have done normally. Instead it gathers, building up beach levels on the prevailing weather side of the groin. These structures don't stop all of the sediment transport. You can see some of it drifting past the end of the groin, and that can continue to move along the coast by the same process of longshore drift. Groin fields have been used for a long time to manage beach levels and protect parts of our coast. But you can see from this simulation that this can have a knock-on effect. The groin will build up levels on the prevailing weather side, but it will starve beaches of sediment on the downward side of that structure. And so we have to be careful how we use these sorts of engineering techniques, as we can have knock-on effects for communities around the coastline. Now let's see what happens when the weather and seasonal storms drive waves from the opposite direction to prevailing currents. We can do this in our model with the other wave paddle. Pushing waves up the beach from the other direction has exactly the same effect. It starts to pick up the sediment that has been deposited previously under prevailing conditions and move it in the opposite direction. So you can see beach levels can really change drastically and material is moved in the opposite direction to how it has moved the rest of the year. And this is why beaches don't always look the same over the whole course of a year. And you can see significant changes to beach levels and shapes depending on the prevailing conditions and seasonal weather patterns. This is a normal and natural part of our dynamic coastal processes. So what happens when the weather drives powerful onshore waves during storms? We can show this in our model by using both wave paddles. By driving powerful waves onshore directly, you can see beach levels are drastically affected. All of the material that has built up over the years through longshore drift is taken away by the high energy waves and offshore. This can happen overnight and is a natural part of our dynamic coastal processes and why beach levels can drop by a metre or more in one single night. This can cause quite a lot of erosion and lead to a significant amount of risk. The material is dragged offshore but is not lost in the system. It can collect in sandbars offshore from where it can be driven back onshore at other times of the year in different weather conditions. 
And this is why our beaches can change drastically. So now you understand how eroded material can be transported along our coast by the process known as longshore drift.